Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Chris Winter and today I'm going to take a look at one of Canon's top prime lenses, the 50mm f1.2. With a huge f1.2 aperture, this lens is definitely one of the most desired lenses around. But today I'm going to take a look to see if it's worth that very big price tag. And I'd just like to say a big thanks to Brisbane Camera Hire for letting me rent out this lens for review. But anyway, let's get started and see how this lens performs. So let's first take a look at the build quality of this 51.2. Now the first thing you'll notice is that it is a big and heavy lens and it's definitely designed for a pro environment. One of the best things about this 51.2 is its focus ring. It's huge and it's very, very smooth. Now I've used this to do some lovely focus pulls and video work and it's been a treat. Now if we move towards the back of the lens, we can see that we've got a nice metallic mount, which is a given for a lens at this price. But another lovely pro feature that we've got is weather sealing, which means this lens should be great in nearly all conditions. And yeah, at around 580 grams, this is definitely a heavy lens, but if you are gonna be using it on a Canon 5D or a Canon 6D, I think it feels just about right. So overall, build quality is fantastic. Hey guys, if you'd like me to do a comparison between the 51.2 and the Sigma 50mm f1.4, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on this video. So on a full frame body like the Canon 5D or 6D, 50mm is a normal field of view and it's one that I really do like. It can be fantastic for street photography and even some portraits. But if you throw it onto something like the Canon 70D, which is what I use, you can actually get a really, really nice portrait lens because it comes out to around 80mm. So the field of view and the whole look that you're gonna be getting is gonna come down to the body that you use. Now, if you are looking for a lens that's gonna produce some incredibly creamy and dreamy bokeh, I'd say look no further than the 50 mm f1.2. I've gotta say, I've been so impressed with just how nice the background blur is and how easy it is to produce with that f1.2 aperture. Now at f1.2, it's probably not as sharp as I'd like it to be, especially for the price, but as you can see, you can still get some lovely shots with this lens. It's creamy and it's not distracting and it's really quite nice. And to be totally honest, that's one of the reasons why you do buy this f1.2 lens. If you are after some really nice background blur, definitely check out this one. So let's quickly talk about macro. So the 51.2 has a minimum focus distance of around about 45 centimeters, the same as its little brother, the f1.4. As you can see, you can't get incredibly macro shots, but it does produce some nice results. Knocking it down to around about f8 produced the best results for me, but to be totally honest, if you're looking for a macro lens, there are much better dedicated macro lenses out there. Now, if you watch my review of the Canon 50mm f1.4, you'll know that the autofocus wasn't the best. And the 51.2, surprisingly, isn't that much better. Now, it's not a super slow lens, but it's not something that I would rely on to shoot fast moving sports or wildlife. And nailing focus at f1.2 can be difficult anyway with such a shallow depth of field. So it's not a bad performer by any means, but if you do want to get your shots absolutely sharp, I just recommend taking your time with this lens. Now having that f1.2 aperture and having a very shallow depth of field, it can actually be very difficult to pull focus manually with this lens. So I'm actually happy that it works pretty well in autofocus for video. Now it's not at the level of the new STM lenses, but it's relatively responsive and it is pretty quiet. Again, shooting at f1.2 is probably not something you'd do anyway, especially with a 50 millimeter lens. But overall, if you do want to use it for video autofocus with something like the Canon 70D, works pretty well. So let's talk about price now, and this is where things uh, generally tend to head north. Coming in at around $1,350, the 51.2 isn't cheap by anyone's means, especially when you compare it to its baby brothers, the 51.8 and the 51.4. You could probably buy about 10 nifty 50s for this, uh, just for the price of one of these 1.2 lenses. But if you are working in a pro environment where quality is key, you know, it might be a good investment. For me, it's just a little bit too expensive, but there is definitely a market out there for it. So enough talking about this lens, let's now take a look at a few image samples. Now image quality is lovely with this 51.2. It's definitely a lens for those who love the dreamy shots and shallow depths of field. But even though it's quite an expensive lens, it's actually not as sharp as I probably expected. At f1.2, there's a noticeable lack of sharpness, which is actually a little bit disappointing because I wanna shoot at this aperture. But other things are good. Flaring's handled very well. There's not too much chromatic aberrations. And again, the bokeh is just beautiful. Now it is a great lens, but I'm not sure if it's worth that huge price, especially if you have to shoot above f1.2, f1.4, or even f1.8 to get some really sharp shots. So there you go guys, that was my review of the Canon 50mm f1.2. If you did like this video, love it if you leave a thumbs up. I hope you all have a fantastic day. See ya.